past three, should we get started? Um, thank you to everyone who's joining us this afternoon for this special collaboration between the Professional Design Institute and Swiss Bureau. Um, we have over 200 of you joining us today. So without further ado, I will hand over to Joachim to start the presentation. Thank you very much, Jody. Hello, everyone. So yes, my name is Joachim Durham. I'm a Swiss interior architect, founder of Swiss Bureau Interior Design. So welcome to this webinar, webinar, sorry. Um, and uh, thank you really, uh, Professional Design Institute to invite me. It's really an honor to be invited to participate to this webinar. So thank you everyone to be here today. Um, so who am I first? So just a little bit about me. Um, I'm coming from the French part of Switzerland. So apologize for my, for my accent. Um, I'm a graduate from the Athenaum Interior Design School in Lausanne and I'm 49 years old and working in this fantastic industry since more than 24 years, including 17 years in Dubai. So uh, Swiss Bureau, who we are, um, a very quick, quick presentation. So we, we are a multi-awarded design and built company with a team of uh, 60 passionate collaborators. Um, so we are 17 years in Dubai. We are specialized in commercial, public, hospitality, and residential projects. But 80% of our designs of our project is for uh, commercial offices. We have in-house all the different departments from the designers, the 3D visualizers, the CAD operators, the estimators, the project managers, and site supervisors. So this type of uh, organizations allows us to control perfectly all the different stages of the design process from the design to cost control and project management. Um, so now we are going to talk about the offices. So what about designing a workspace in 2020? Um, I'm sure in this forum, everybody is very passionate about your job, we are passionate about our profession. So for us, it's always a pleasure to arrive every day into the office, early morning, but maybe it's not the case for everyone. So it's our task as a designer to create a nice uh, environment in the office. Um, we know that humans are very sensitive uh, to the environment. Um, so when you consider how much time we spend in the office, it always makes sense that our surrounding uh, suits our needs and provide us with a pleasant experience uh, all around. So the question is, what about interior design makes us more productive, more collaborative, the, com the comfort? Um, this is what I'm going to try to answer in this presentation. So basically a well thought interior design can make employees happier, more productive and more efficient. The commercial interior design is a tool to keep the employees motivated throughout the day. The, the employers now, they realize really the importance of a well-designed office and understand how the design is connected to work or workforce performances. So the idea is to bring your home basically into the office, which means bring the comfort, bring the atmosphere. Um, it also points the, the, the importance of bringing in more informal meetings areas to increase the collaboration between the staff. Um, also, the quality and the functionality of the space are equally important, equally important. And with, with aspects of such acoustic, lighting, and biophilic elements. So we at Swiss Bureau, our, our team are constantly looking to innovative solutions to respond to the new trends and, and the human behavior uh, which uh, require uh, a, a workspace. So the current situation, so there's a research from Gensler, uh, the, one of the largest architectural firm across the world, that they revealed that the poor workplace design costs approximately in US $330 billion in loss of productivity. So it's huge. Many companies now, they've realized that they need to create an environment where the employees, they want to be. So they are realizing the real impact of a well thought office design uh, has on the productivity. It's, it's, uh, it's really contributes to the employees' productivity, efficiency, and the retentions as well. 
it attracts the, the employees. The, so here, basically, it is creating happiness in our workspace. is perhaps the most productive tool. And uh, you can maybe avoid this type of mood on this slide. You know, when you're in the office, uh, I'm bored. What time is it? I need to go home. So the, 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 whole, the whole story is, uh, is really to change this. So if this design is really a huge part of the employee's retention and motivation. So um, in the example, you know, the millennials, they look at every details of the office environment before they choose the company where they will work. It's really has a, an, 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 uh, it has a, it's um, a factor to attract talents as well. So you realize the importance of it. So the, a well thought design, or what we can co call also a cool office, it's direct impact our ability to work uh, and, 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 and be our, our most productive uh, and creative every day that we are in our workspace. When, when you think a cool office, you can imagine, you know, like a living room style, some meditation space or conference room with sofas, bean bags, chairs, greenery, vibrant colors, and a lot of room for activities. The first ones who developed this, it was, uh, it was uh, Google, like uh, almost 20 years ago. They clearly understand the importance of treating well the, 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 the employees. So the, the, um, the office now all over the world, they are adopting this new, I would say, new and, uh, and, and orthodox working and meeting space to attract young talent and make working space much more fun and with more internal synergies. So today, um, I will talk about different solution. Um, we, you know, in this day, modern working space is all about creating welcoming space that conducts growth, optimize the work performance and is comfortable for the employees. So the visual identity the visual identity is really, um, it's, it's of the office sends a, a strong image to its employees and to the visitors as well. It can inspire by affirming the company values and it cares about them. You know, a part of the design, the most, func the, 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 the most functional layouts adapted to the company, I will talk about three different points that in my opinion are fundamental to consider while designing an office project. Identity, to design an environment at the image of the corporate identity and values of the company. We need to talk about comfort and well-being, a place where the employees keep stimulated and where we must ensure maximum comfort. And the collaboration, a place where employees will have pleasure to work and whether they will interact much more between them. So about the identity, let's start by identity. Um, today, the brand is something very, really, very important. Uh, you can realize that all over you, more and more companies are inter very attentive to their image uh, and use different tools to communicate it, such as their logo, the website, social medias. And the office interior design is as well uh, an, a very important one. Um, so the reception area will be the first impression the visitor will have about the company he is visiting. It's like the homepage for a website. So the, the, the reception, re, reception area represents its corporate identities, its values. This area should translate the image of the company, not only to the visitors, but for the employees as well. It's the, the, the reception is like a, a logo we enter in, you know, it's like a, uh, defining all the codes and the values of the company. So here on this picture, you can see the reception of a property finder, it's a project we designed. Uh, it's a company owning a real estate uh, portal website. Uh, we have designed it in the shape of their logo. That is like this little hut, little house. Um, and uh, that is, of course, using in relation with the real estate. So we then use wooden packets covering all the surfaces. Packet is a homey material, so it's in line with the home sweet home. The slick surface of the mirror, for example, that we have on the counter, is uh, is um, it's a feeling of high tech, you know. For it's a website. Don't don't, don't forget that. So the, the the overall offers all the ingredients of their identity. It's another example of another project we designed for Cartier. So it's completely different, but as you can see, the mood is much more luxurious. It's in line with the identity of the brand. 
the, there is also the aspect of the wow effect. So it's also a very, a very strong impact is essential uh, at the, the, the reception. Um, the visitor, you will remember about his passage, passage into the office. And now you can see more and more very extravagant receptions that don't let the visitor indifferent. So we must play with the emotional, we must in a certain way shock or creating this wow effect for the visitor with a very strong visual impact in order for him to, to remember of his visit. It's like an event, you know, you want to, to people, for people to talk about it and uh, he will talk about it around, around him. So it's a kind of marketing as well. The, this is another example that's for uh, Hira Wall Raven. It's an office that we design. It has been inspired by the core business of the company, which is manufacturing pipe support for AC ducting and lots of other industrial MEP elements. We have used some of the elements. Uh, I don't know if you can see here on the top, on the left of the image, uh, on the double heights, you know, some rings that are one of the uh, uh, products they are producing. And we created like a big chandelier with it. So um, it was quite interesting to, to, to rethink about what they're, rethink about the, 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 the products they are, they're, they, they, they're producing. That is very, that they're manufacturing. That is very boring products, but how we can have something cool with it. Um, so then the design process starts at the reception and then we can continue. This is always the same project. So, so we can use the same design language across the project uh, by using some key features like shapes or material we, we found in the reception. Um, in their management offices, we have closed the ceiling to give more luxurious feeling, but we kept the electrical conduct visible again to keep the same language. Here is one of the collaboration space where we can recognize the same plywood and acrylic uh, windows that we, uh, glass that we used at the reception. Comfort safety, so it's much more comfort and, and, uh, and um, well-being. So, you know, the home, the new home style comfort design in office is a sign that employers are listening to the desires of the staff. The, the design approach is all about making office real, more comfortable and, and home-like. The, one of the most important, yes, is the well-being. And the well-being is linked to the furniture, the acoustic, the biophilic, the lighting, the quality of the air. All these points are factors of productivity. Now I will elaborate more about the furniture, the acoustic and the biophilic design. That for me are the most important points. The, for the furniture, the furniture we call the furniture from comfort. So we're, over the past years, the office furniture industry has very well understood that this transformation. Uh, they have started to design different solutions to respond to this new office environment we are talking. Um, I will just present what I trust the most innovative designs in line with this transformation, such as the high adjustable desk, the collaboration furniture, and the individual work lounge pods. The, the height adjustable desk have many advantages for the employees, such as the ergonomy, you know, it's natural moving while working, and uh, it's a body motion, so it's a healthy body. We, we see that more and more companies now are offering those desks to their employees, even if they're more, more expensive than the normal desk, but they understood how the benefits it can bring for the staff. The collaboration furniture, so those furniture, they respond to a very new demand from the habit, which is collaborative spaces. I will talk about collaborative spaces a bit later in this uh, presentation. The warp pods. So that's really new. Uh, it takes some space, but it's very effective. So individual work lounge pods. So this is really a new kind of innovative piece of furniture. Researchers, they, they took the inspiration from the cognitive uh, neuro, neuroscience about how our brain functions. As per some studies, you know, we take like 23 minutes to focus 100% after an interruption. So these pods, they block partially our vision and, and do not let us distract as easily if we were in an in a open space uh, working area. So, they use all this acoustic, also they can use the, this acoustic material which helps for the focus because we have less sound. 
the, the position is a more relaxed, you know, it's more loungy, which also helps to, to focus. So that's a very, very interesting uh, uh, element, but again, it takes some space and, um, and uh, yeah. Now about the acoustic. So good or bad acoustics have a significant impact on the productivity. The, the employee satisfaction and healthy on, in, in, in our workspace. So noise is probably the most annoying source in the, in the offices and, and it can lead really to increase the, st the stress for the staff. So in order to solve this issue during the recent years, a large variety of design solutions and material arrived in the design industry. So the first one is like, the, the most common is like acoustic wall panels. It's some product that absorb the sound. So we can find many different types of pads with uh, different geometrical shapes, design, that we just clad on the walls. And with these no new uh, design elements on the walls, it offers also to designers uh, interesting design options of our of decoration. We have acoustic on the ceiling, same as for the walls. There's a huge variety of suspended panels, which they are not only bringing good acoustic solutions, but it can also help uh, to create interesting design on the ceiling. The, um, the, the furniture as well. There's some new types of uh, furniture that are right in the market, such as the phone boots, um, the partitions that are on the, on the tables, and also uh, the single, but it's some, some collaborative uh, spaces. Now let's talk about the biophilic design. So the, the, the sorry, oops. Uh, so what is biophilic? What does it consist? Basically, it means bringing the nature into the interior. Studies shows that the offices using biophilic designs um, have um, made the, the, the employees a bit 10% happier, uh, more healthy and more productive. Uh, it has also reduced the absenteeism. So the, the most obvious way of bringing nature uh, into the office is through integration of greenery, as it has been proven to make the air cleaner, reduce noise, and generally creates a more welcoming place to work. Here in this picture, you can see how we have started the biophilic design approach from the lift lobby uh, with an olive tree um, under the stretch ceiling that's a stretch ceiling that bring like the sun bringing natural, uh, natural light effects. Um, we have also displayed the plants all across the office in some wooden like natural uh, uh, plant boxes. We can also use other ways disposing the plants, such as vertical, uh, vertical garden, but that's quite an expensive uh, solution. But it's very efficient. People they love it. But the beautiful design is not only addition of, of pots of plants or vertical garden. Um, a part of the plants, we can add natural light, uh, natural textures, uh, like natural material, like, you know, some wood, some, maybe even the concrete, concrete flooring brings a natural elements. And also some images of landscape, you know, some graphic design of landscapes. So it will differently helps to provide a, a positive impact and, and more biophilic. That, this is an interesting uh, case study I want to show you. It's where we used all the codes of biophilic, in, uh, but except the plants. This is a project we designed in uh, Geneva. In the, it was in the United Nations for the room of the Emirates. And uh, so it's a big room where you have all these big conference in the United Nations. And basically what we have done, we are projecting the ceiling, a movie of the sky of the UAE, the Emirates, from the dusk to down. So you can imagine when they stay hours and hours in those uh, rooms, in this room, they can see the, you know, the, the ceiling changing the color. It's like if they were outside. So the carpets, we cannot see here very well on this image, but it represents the, the color of the sand of Alain Deserts. That is a very particular sand here in the UAE. It's very orange. And we have shaped all the surrounding uh, walls with, um, with some shades of forms of dunes. So we took the full inspiration from the UAE natural codes. So the result is a conference room that brings a certain peaceful and, and really a poetic atmosphere. And for it, it was important to create this. In, in, 
you know, because we, we hoped by this, the, the delegates of the UA, the United Nations and the, all the diplomats to, to really, to help them to focus on findings and solutions while discussing on very serious matters about our planet. Now I will talk about collaborative uh, and flexibility. Let's, you know, the collaboration between employees inside office is very important. So interaction in, and, and inter internal communication between the staff are really fundamental for any business. The human interaction is what keeps the wheels of business in motion. So having a great office interactions really improve teamwork, which makes an entire team work efficiently during the time of, of high stress. So in general, most collaboration occurred through formal and scheduled meetings having many participants. As a re result, you know, in the past years, we have conference rooms and other meeting areas. So these spaces are designed to facilitate large group of work progress. But now we have realized that informal meeting space have taken a serious advantage versus the, the formal meeting room. Uh, today can also serve as a better way to hold meetings with a smaller amount of people. The best way to achieve the collaboration is to have collision points where the employees are kind of forced to bump into each other and, and strike up organic conversations. So when you have different people from different departments, they're not used to, to meet together from the finance, uh, from, with, uh, I don't know, the, 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 the HR, for example. So, you know, it can engage in those space, they can engage uh, more easily some, some um, conversations and to know more about each other's. So here in this project, we've integrated different type of informal meeting space, either with the help of simple furniture, you can see here like a coffee shop uh, that I laid down in different areas or in built, tip, built, uh, sorry, built, uh, built in spaces. So, you know, being surrounded in a kind of atypic environment offer the employees a certain creativity while discussing their current business. In a certain way, it, it helps them to, to be more creative and, and to interact together, as I said before. You, you can see here different examples of from informal collaborating meeting space. And uh, as you can imagine for us designers, it's, uh, it offers to us a lot of freedom of expression and it's quite the best part to design. another example and on the space also we can break all the corporate identity codes of the company um, and design more creative environments so here in the example this is the quartier what you saw before remember this this uh, this uh, reception that was very chic very elegant now this is their breakout uh, not breakout but the, the, their their um, co-working space. So we can also use the, the space of the cafeterias and the pantry as informal meeting space, which is not only reduce the pressure on the space, but also encourage a more informal and collaborative working environment. It's, it really helps to free the meeting rooms. In the cafeteria, you know, we, we have uh, employees from different departments, again, can bump into each other and where they're able to engage some discussions. Uh, which was not really scheduled. So they can also invite clients and visitors in that space and uh, if the purpose of the meeting is not too confidential. And we have seen that, you know, in some offices we designed a couple of years ago, the client who wanted to take at least 20% of the surface of the office. So like him, I want a big, big pantry, but a very cool environment, like a coffee shop, like this. So this is what we designed and they were very happy. And what we see now, when it's time to go home at like 6, 6.30, there's still a lot of people in the country. They're playing uh, with PlayStation, playing pool, or just discussion, or discussion, having some discussions around the coffee. And that's very nice to see that. So the people, they stay more, in fact, in the office when they have uh, uh, such a place. So the, um, now, we are coming to the post-COVID um, and um, the big question, there are different trends now what's happening. So 
you know, the post-COVID has a significant effect on, on various business and industries uh, across the world. So we find ourselves in a really interesting per period of transition. But it's important to note that the office culture will remain an integral part of the employee experience. We are women after all, and so I'm really a big fan of the, I'm not really a big fan of the working from home, uh, despite we see a huge uh, increase of, um, of the, uh, the, 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 the productivity. Um, if we push too much the, the home working, it means we will lose all the, the company culture. So imagine you are, you are engaged in a new company and then you have to work from home. So you, 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 cannot, you cannot be part of the, of the culture of the company. So, so I don't trust. I know there are theories that people that we say now we're going back home now, it's a working from home, people are very productive. So I don't believe at all. It's a, I believe more that we're in the changing of the, the office design paradigm. So where we could return to cubicles and, and uh, eventually, uh, where we can add more focus room uh, because we have noticed that the productivity has increased uh, during the confinement. When you work at home, you are much more productive. So there are a lot of questions uh, that are on the table and, and we're really curious and, and keen to find some, some uh, solutions. So yes, so our job as the designers is um, to create strong strategy along with a thoughtful design to ensure a happy, functional and creative working environment. Um, implementing all what we discussed would require some fairly significant commitment uh, from the management of the company. However, the potential rewards for an employee engagement perspective are really huge. Um, so again, I strongly believe that creating happiness in a workspace is perhaps still the most productive tool. Thank you. Thank you, Joachim. That was really insightful and I'm sure a lot of people can take away a lot of knowledge from that. Um, we'll now move over to the Q&A section of the webinar. So if you have any questions for Joachim, just pop them into the Q&A icon on your screens now. Um, so the first question we've got is um, about your biophilic design. Um, so do both natural and artificial um, elements have the same effect in a workplace? I didn't understand, sorry. So do both natural and artificial biophilic elements have the same effect in a workplace? Natural and artificial. Personally, if, if we're talking about plants, I don't yes. think so. Uh, uh, no, I don't, I, don't, I don't believe the plastic will replace the real nature. So of course, if you go biophilic, it has to be Natural, it requests a bit more of maintenance, but uh, it's the whole difference. Okay. Um, what is your design process? The design process is, you know, for an office, the most important at the beginning, it's the, the layout to, 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 to discuss with the client, to be sure that we're in line with uh, its requirements in terms of the location of all the different departments. Um, and in the meantime, we, produce different moods of uh, uh, style that he will choose, then we understand exactly what, where, where he want to go. Uh, once he choose the mood and he finalize the, the layout, so then we start the, the 3D to uh, the, the concept, you know, or everything 3D. And once he's okay with the 3D, he like the 3D, maybe some changes here and there with the material mood boards. Then we start all the execution drawings with a cost control. So meaning that we give, if the budget is uh, already uh, shared with us, we know exactly what we can do, what we cannot do. So it's very important during the design process, we align the budget. So we have a team in parallel that is always controlling the budget as per the design. And then okay. once the, the drawings are finished, uh, we prepare the bill of quantity and then we send to the client for him to tender. Okay. Um, what do you find most challenging about designing a workplace? Hmm. The most challenging, I think it's always the budget because clients have big expectations. They want, you know, they want this, they want this, they want this. And then, and then they realize that, uh, they don't have the budget. So for us is to, it's challenging. It's very interesting also is how to create this this environment, this wow factor environment with a, a smaller budget. And um, 
and, uh, and this is a very interesting creative process because you have to scratch your head twice to 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 find the right design solutions. But uh, the, that's the rest uh, we have challenge. There's always challenge, but that's that's the the, the, the biggest one. Um, so related to that, is there alternative ways to execute biophilic designs with a tight budget? Yes, as I say, you can uh, use graphics, like big images, you know, with natural landscape. Um, you can use um, some natural, ma natural material, like finishes, like veneers um, or laminated that are uh, that are uh, today we have amazing laminated um, material that reflects the, the nature. Um, you can use plants, but you can use just pot plants, just a few. This doesn't require a lot of maintenance. No need to make a vertical garden. Um, it's basically trying to use the maximum of natural uh, uh, material. Okay. Um, how do you get the most out of small spaces? How do you? How do you get the most out of small spaces? How do you get the most? The most what, sorry? Um, just to utilize the space effectively. By, just by designing the perfect layout. And you know, sometimes the clients, they have a space that is not big enough for what they want. So, so we have to rationalize, you know, if they want a big pantry, for example, so we sacrifice the space of the pantry and then we put more working space, but, but we don't have choice, you know, yeah. uh, we just have to rationalize the design. Okay. Um, do you consider aesthetics or functionality more important? The first, the most important is the functionality. Because an office that, does, that doesn't have the right functionality, the right flow uh, inside the office, it doesn't work. So the first thing is the functionality is the, is the, is the for me, is the layout. Uh, and once this is done, then we can uh, play with the, with, the, uh, with, the, um, with the design. But there is one thing also important is that functionality means not only layout, but means also all the, the services, all the MEP, you know, the air conditioning, the electricity, the AV. So all this has a certain cost. And Today, for us, it represents the MEP design. The MEP installation represents approximately 27-28% of the budget. So this allows us, after to, to play, as per the budget, to play a bit more with, with the design. But this we cannot um, compromise at all on the MEP. That's the first functionality. Yeah. Okay. Um, how do you to utilize sustainability in the workplace design? We utilize it when it requires. And when we have clients acquiring sustainability products, we provide it. But some clients, they don't want because they know that it's more expensive. So we have to be flexible. Of course, we would love to use only uh, those materials, you know, but it's a sustainable material. But it's, uh, it's quite uh, difficult to pass in the budget from the clients. So when we're talking the big multinationals companies, uh, yes, they want it and they have the budget for it. Okay. Um, what's the latest design trend you've noticed in the workplace recently? What I can read, for me, it's much more about the, the working space and what, we, we, what we've seen now with the COVID-19. Uh, it's about the, the open space. Uh, it's a space that has, we are disturbed all the time in our, in our open space, right? It's always there, are people passing through, there is noise like this. And what, what is coming back to the, uh, on the table is what I showed in my last uh, slide, is about the cubicles, which was used in the 70s, in the 80s, you know, it's not very nice, it takes some space, but creating cubicles I think this is something that will be more and more discussed now. Um, now the trends about, uh, I'm talking about much more about the functionality, but the trends about design uh, and material, I think we have everything. I mean, the, the, the code of colors, again, it's all related to the company, uh, the company um, identity. Uh, the, 
it's 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 uh, it's much more about the functionality, and I think this is what we have to to reconsider seriously is about the open space. Yeah. Okay. Um, and finally, what advice would you give to an interior design student? Be curious. <laughs> read, read what's happening around us. Um, but I think it's it just be curious about your own way of utilizing the space, what you like, how do you use. I think that's very, very important to see how am I how to, 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 to use my experience that should be rational, of course, and to bring it on the, on the on paper, to bring it on the designer. And, um, and always to look around, to see the, the defaults, to see the, the, the positive aspects of some designs, of some human behavior, how people are living, and that's what is creating the design. This is what is, yes, that's the imagination. Thank you. Um, thank you, Joachim and Swiss Bureau, um, for your webinar, Insightful Knowledge. Um, we'll be sending a recording of the webinar to everyone who registered with us today and a copy of the slides as well. Um, so thank you very much. Thanks for joining us. And thank we'll... you, everyone. Thank you, Judy. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.